Hello, this is Around the World in 80 Telescope, the live webcast in the 100 hours of astronomy. So, we are still at the European Southern Observatory. The night is getting longer, but we are now going to, to Japan. So, next one uh, that we are going to start now is the Hinode Space Mission. The, we are going to the base, to the, to the control center. But first, we will start with their video. Our lives depend on the sun. Shining modestly on nearly every form of life, day after day, it's so close to us that we're prone to overlook the sun's importance. Despite its modest appearance, however, the sun is alive and roiling with activity, unnoticed by us. Many of the sun's phenomena remain a mystery, awaiting scientific explanation. Both ground-based telescopes and observation satellites have been used for studying solar activity phenomena. Japan has successfully carried out two solar observation satellite missions, significant achievements including revealing the mechanism behind solar flares. However, one important mystery remains unsolved. Why does the corona reach temperatures of several million degrees Kelvin? Finding the answer to this question will not only deepen our understanding of other stars, but it will also represent a major discovery that provides us with a key to understanding the mechanism of the entire universe. In this age of accelerating space development, the ability to predict solar activity is becoming increasingly more important because this knowledge helps to protect satellite equipment and astronauts engaged in extravehicular activities against the dangers of solar radiation. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency and the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan, in collaboration with space agencies in the US and UK, launched a Mu-5 rocket bearing a solar observation satellite on September 23, 2006. The satellite, named Hinode, conducts continuous solar observation from a sun-synchronous orbit hovering above the border between day and night. Hinode carries three telescopes. The first is a Solar Optical Telescope, or SOT. It boasts the largest aperture of any orbiting solar telescope. Making up the main body of the satellite, SOT is a reflecting telescope, 50 centimeters in diameter, that can produce very fine images of the sun. It can also measure magnetic fields on the solar surface. The cylindrical object next to SOT is the X-ray telescope, or XRT, and it's used to observe the sun's corona. The XRT is not only capable of detailed observation of the coronal structure, but it is also sensitive to the corona's wide temperature range, which runs from 1 million to 10 million degrees Kelvin. Finally, Hinode also has the Extreme Ultraviolet Imaging Spectrometer, or EIS, and it's placed on the other side of the satellite from the XRT. EIS is an instrument for observing the sun's ultraviolet rays, separating them into a spectrum like a rainbow. EIS identifies the chemical elements present above the sun, as well as their speeds, temperatures, and densities. Hinode observes various solar phenomena using this trio of telescopes. Here are amazingly fine images of the sun's dynamic activity as observed by Hinode. Let's take a look. This is a full view of the sun's photosphere captured by another spacecraft, SOHO. What will it look like when viewed by Hinode? Below and to the right, the Earth can be seen at the same scale. Hinode's Solar Optical Telescope captured the photosphere in great detail, providing us with a totally new perspective of our Sun. 
This is the sun's chromosphere as observed in a calcium H line. On December 13, 2006, Hinode captured a massive solar flare. It also captured an X-ray view of the flare. Shown in the right half is the chromospheric view, while the left half offers an X-ray view of the corona. Plasma heated by the flare is clearly visible. Hinode has revealed that areas of the sun formerly considered inactive are in fact very active with an endless series of small explosions. Hinode, the rising sun, is revealing a succession of unexpected perspectives of the sun. We are now going live to our friends in Hinode in Japan. Moshi Moshi. <laughs> moshi Moshi. So could you please tell us tell us who you are who you are? Hi, um, I'm Takashi Seki, uh, associate professor at uh, National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. And here's my colleague. Hello, I'm Alphonse Sterling. Um, and I'm a scientist uh, at the Marshall Space Flight Center, actually in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, but for the Hinode project, I'm uh, stationed here in Japan uh, for a large part of the mission, uh, already two years. So we've seen so, in the video, um, you, we, we've seen in the video, you have ahead. quite a whole observatory up there going from uh, from the UVX visible, so what, what do you do? What, what do you do in terms of solar physics? Well, uh, with visible light, uh, we can study the so-called photosphere, which is the visible surface of the sun. If you look at uh, the sun with your eyes, you'll see the surface, and that's so-called photosphere, and that's where uh, many things like a sunspot, and so on are going on. And that's why we, what we observe with a visible telescope. And with UV and then with X-ray, we can see the upper uh, layers of the solar atmosphere, where uh, many more other things are taking place, uh, which of, uh, some of which are a key process to uh, explosive event called flares and, and so on. And actually the corona it, itself is, is a very uh, thin layer of the solar atmosphere, which is very hot. We think our, its temperature is in millions of kelvins. And why it's so hot? It is one of the biggest questions in the solar physics, and that's one of the scientific uh, targets we are addressing. I can think of anything else, I think. Um Yes, um, that's uh, exactly right. Um, one thing that's very key, uh, or a key puzzle in solar astronomy, is um, uh, as um, Dr. Seki was saying, how you get how you heat the outer atmosphere of the sun, how you heat the corona, and we've known for a long time that this energy comes from well the center of the sun, and it gets transferred up from through the surface of the sun and into this outer atmosphere that you can see here. It heats it. But we haven't been able to detail the exact processes about how this goes on. Uh, we know that it deals with the magnetic field of the sun, the same thing that causes sunspots like this. Um, and for the first time with Hino Day, we are able to look continuously with the same observatory without the atmosphere bothering us at the, the processes at the lowest levels of the sun, so the photosphere and chromosphere, which you see here, um, and also the magnetic field and how it's reacting to the uh, motions in the uh, lower atmosphere. And then we can follow that uh, from that low level, which we see in white light and, um, and uh, lines like that, and through the uh, ultraviolet regions, which is sort of a medium level between the lowest level and the hot outer corona, and then out into the corona. So with Hino Day, we can follow the uh, action